For more on the Knicks, we go inside out with SNY NBA insider Ian Begley. Ian, things got a little dicey there in the second half, especially in that third quarter, and Jalen Brunson didn't have his best game. But how encouraging was it for the Knicks to see some of the supporting cast, not just on the floor, but also stepping up in the way they did? Yes, yeah, certainly encouraging, I would think, for the Knicks because your strength with this team is its depth. So when you have a Josh Hart hitting big shots, a Dante DiVincenzo hitting big, big shots, a Precious Achua doing what he did, and even a Miles McBride playing well defensively late in this game, I think you have to be nothing but encouraged. You beat a good Sixers team. Sixers team, obviously, without Joel Embiid, but their home, still a tough place to win, and the Knicks find a way to get it done on a night where, as you mentioned, Chelsea, Jalen Brunson, uh, maybe his rhythm was a little bit off with a shot. Yeah, Jalen Brunson, just 5 for 18 from the field, 0 for 4 from 3. Uh, another one of those guys was Boyan Bogdanovich, who made all six of his threes and scored 22 points. The thought at the deadline was that he has a tradable contract next year. But, Ian, what do you think is his long-term future with this team? Yeah, one thing that I think we haven't seen this Nick front office do a lot is box themselves in to any particular plan. So I think that's true with Bogdanovich too, right? Like, let's say the Knicks they make a deep run and Bogdanovich is a significant part of it. I would assume that they would keep him and then maybe you slide another salary that's around his salary into a trade if they go ahead and make that trade in the offseason where they trade for a big-time player. But obviously that salary was attractive to them in addition to the skills Bogdanovich brings to the court because he's got a salary that they can put into a trade in the offseason. But I don't think they're fully committed to any one move with Bogdanovich or anybody else because so much of it depends on who's available in the offseason, what they do the rest of this season and into the playoffs. So there's so many variables there and I, and I don't think they are committed one way or the other on McDonough. Yeah, you definitely don't want to give him up if he's playing like that. Uh, as for another guy coming back from injury, Ian, Isaiah Hartenstein started but only played 11 minutes. How do you see Tom Thibodeau working these guys back in down the stretch? Yeah, specifically with Hartenstein, I, I think the Knicks are going to be cautious here because of the games that he had missed because of the sore Achilles over the few weeks leading up to the trade deadline. There was two specific stretches where he was out because of that sore Achilles. So I think they're going to be cautious here. And one thing that I find interesting, they still have an open roster spot, right, for the 15-man uh, the roster. I wonder if they're keeping an eye on how some of these injured guys look, maybe Hartenstein in particular, and maybe they see, after they can assess it a little bit more, what they need to do with that open roster spot, whether it's bringing Taj Gibson back or doing something else. 